All right, so Johnny Rebel is this guy whose songs were sent to us years ago, and uh, they're real racist songs, but Johnny says he's not a racist. Well, how does he say that? Well, we've been trying to track him down for years, and this is actually... Where's he been hiding? Let me just give you a little bit of a musical retrospective before uh, I get Johnny on the phone. The other day, I did a fishing trip. Just me and my boat. Another one. I, I just don't know how Johnny thinks he's not a racist. <laughs> the house next door to me has been sold to niggers. That's what we get right to it. Right. They claim to be wild Indians from the plains. I mean, I can't. Hey, Johnny. What else would write these songs? Well, Johnny, uh, welcome to the show. We've been hunting you down for years. Uh-huh. Now, the first question, obviously, is how is it those songs aren't racist? <laughs> well, the songs might be a little racist, but uh, I've been asked if I'm a racist. I'm not a racist. So how'd you, you know, know the, song? the songs are a little racist uh, in, in ways, little. but they they respect the way I feel. Uh, now, now, when you say, uh, like, some niggers never die, they just smell that way. Yeah. I mean, that seems to me you don't like black people. <laughs> no, listen, uh, uh, is this Howard? Yeah. Okay, listen, I don't have a thing against the black race. Right. The only thing I have against the black race is the attitude that white people still owe them something for the days of slavery. I, I never, you know, I, I've never been to slavery. I still don't believe in that kind of stuff, and I, I, I never will. I don't believe that they should be uh, burning crosses in front of their houses. I don't think we should mistreat blacks. I just don't feel that blacks, I feel that blacks still believe that we owe them something from the old days just because they were slaves at one time. But that's now, that's, what I'm trying to point out is this. All white people didn't have slaves, and they seem to think that the white race owes them things. You know, this is my feelings on this stuff. Well, like when you write, uh, the house next door to me has just been sold to niggers. And, and, and great, the what? I say the house next door to me has been sold to niggers. That's I didn't write that. Oh, you didn't write that one? No, sir. Because that's bootleg stuff. That's bootleg. I wrote ten. I wrote. I, I I wrote ten songs. I had twelve songs I recorded. Two of them. One is called "Move Them Niggers North." Yes. The other is called "Nigger Nigger." Those were not my songs. I did not write those. I wrote the other ten. What oh. are the names of your songs then? Okay, yeah. one would be. Uh, some niggers never die. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, another one that I kept that I wrote uh, was uh, "Stay Away from Dixie." Nigger hating me. Uh, <laughs> All right. Let me play a little of uh, "Nigger Hating Me," so maybe we could. I got nigger nigger. Oh, you have nigger nigger. All right, go ahead. Now, nigger nigger is Johnny's though. So it is. Oh, it is. Nigger nigger is yours, Johnny. No, no, that's not my. That's not his. I recorded it. Oh, you recorded it? I recorded it because the guy I was recording for at the time wanted me to record it. Oh, I see. That's how you know. They're marching for equality. They'll never be as good as me. We won't let them get a great. We must always segregate. I'm in that place. Now, would you let now, your... How's that not racist? Would you let your daughter, let's say, marry a black guy? No, sir. No way. No way. I wonder why that, though, if you're not a racist. Well, no, wait. I, listen, I don't think mix, uh, races should be mixed. Uh, if I'd be a racist, I wouldn't like any any other race with the white race. So what uh, I, I'm not a racist. Like I said, I've got a thing against the attitude of blacks, uh, of uh, a, a lot of blacks. And, uh, Howard, I know you know that I've got, uh, I've said this before, and I, I'm sure you've heard it before. I've got a lot of black friends, and I'd do as much for them. I'd do anything for them. I, there's some guys I'd go out. All the way for them, just as with, just as well as being a white man. Like old Ben Blacks who think that I owe them something. Oh, I can walk down the down the streets of the town here through uh, uh, through the uh, uh, colored part of town down here, and first thing, 
If I say no to one of these young guys, hell, they'll look at me like I'm half nuts. Hey, don't you, know? you think, though, that, like, let's say some kid hears this on the radio, like, you know, some niggers never die, they just smell that way. Don't you think that might make uh, these little white kids hate black people? Or it might hurt a little black kid's feelings if he heard it. Well, it probably does, but that was written, you could, this was written way back in 1966. Now, let me ask you this. You sound like you got a pretty good voice and a, and a good singing style. If you take away all the, like, uh, you know, all the so-called nigger references in your music, do you just become like every other guy? So is this a way of just selling Separating records? Separating yourself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the, hook. the way this started, uh, uh, in, in, in 66, they, I had just moved. I used to live, I lived in Mississippi at the time. I moved back to Louisiana. When I came back, uh, Jay Miller asked me if I could write stuff like that. I said, sure, I can write stuff like that, I guess. And I went on home and I wrote a couple of things, like Cajun Ku Klux Klan and looking for a handout. We got that one. Hold on, let me play that one. Right. And, uh... Hold on one sec. Here we go. We'll play a little okay. bit. I'm warning you that when I'm through, you're going to change your tune. This story's about a nigger. His name was Levi Coon. He walked into a cafe. He thought he'd get a fight. He thought that they would serve him since they passed the symbol rights. The waitress told him no, and that he'd better go. Sam say, I don't have to go. So he sat there in that cafe, being stubborn as a mule. No matter what she said, he wouldn't get up off that stoop. He sat there like a jackass that I'm gonna demonstrate. I came in here to eat, and I ain't leaving till I be. Wow. Nigger hating me, his too. Is nigger hating me yours? Yes, it is. All right, but here's a <laughs> okay. I like sugar and I like tea, but I don't like niggers. No, siree. There's two no things that'll make me cute. That's a hog eating sloth in a big black spook, you know. I do it like a barnyard and strike for it. And the end of a lazy beach. Sure like to get a hold of nigger hating me. Record that one. How many years ago? Oh, that was that was about in uh, '66 or '67. Yeah, All these songs were recorded within a period of about three years. Now, when you say a guy came to you and asked you if you could write this kind of stuff, in other words, you said there's some money in uh, putting out racist songs, so uh, he sat you down and put out an album of this stuff. No, it wasn't an album in, in those days, right. uh, Howard. We'd put out singles, you know. Several singles. Write a couple singles. of songs, and uh, he he put those out. Did the songs and, sell well? Huh? Did the songs sell well? Did you make a lot of money? I didn't make a terrific amount of money. I've made maybe four or five thousand dollars off those records. There were more of them bootlegs than anything. What about when you tour? I mean, can you do those songs? Uh... No, I never did do those things on tour. I played them one time in an area around here, uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, in, in a town about twenty miles yeah. south of here. Right. I did it on a show because uh, uh, a few people were asking for it. You know. Right. It was at a festival of some sort, and I was out on the street with my band, and and they asked for it, and we sang it. Have you always made a living as a musician? No, I, uh, being a musician has never been my one, never, number one occupation. I did it as a sideline. Right. You know, I had a day job, and I played seven nights a week, a week at one one time in my life, raising my kids. Wouldn't you like to see him on TRL on that MTV? Oh, yeah, thing? Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Rebel. <laughs> what the hell is here's, that? Uh, here's nigger nigger in the raid. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put out a video, I guess. So, so, so um, now when you put out songs that don't have you know the N word in it, how do you do? How do you do with and those? What do you call? It? You don't go under Johnny Rebel. Somebody told me they, they they heard some of Johnny Rebel without the N word. And really? It it doesn't have the same punch. <laughs> You know what I mean? Inspired. <laughs> right. No, we do country. I did country songs. I did quite a few country songs. What's this new one? And you know, write write uh, songs. You know, and do that. But, you got this uh, new one about uh, Osama bin Laden, right? Yes, sir. Let me hear a little of this without you know. This one's not one of his end songs. <laughs> Just some up in the lot, hanging by his yeah, yeah. We're gonna f in the lot and make a little faster pay. So you need that. We're gonna kill us, some up in the lot, hanging by his yeah, yeah. He 
can run, he can hide. We're going to find him anyway. No, no nigger references in this. Just throw nigger in every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to catch Osama bin nigger. We're going to get him in the Osama bin Laden is a nigger. <laughs> nigger, 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 nigger. Um, now, how come no songs? How come no songs, Johnny, about the Jews? Do you hate them? No, I don't. I, I'm not a racist. I don't have anything against any race. Right, but I'm saying. Why don't you sit down and pen these songs? Yeah. Do what? Why'd you write these songs? Those songs, well, now listen, you're talking about 35, 36, 37 no years ago. Don't blame the time. Which is that different was time back then. Set in America at that time. Now, I did not say I wouldn't write a song like that now. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You just use African American. But at that time, that was a very different ma mindset. So, and now, if I write a, a song about that, which we'll have an album coming out next year. Uh, uh, not an album, a CD coming out next year. But it'll be mostly on attitude. I know like Alan Jackson and Alan and, 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 and um, I mean uh <laughs> Reverend Jackson, Jesse Jackson and Alan Charlton running around stirring up black people. Now, I understand you're working on a song called Nigger in Law. Is that true for your for your next Well album? I, I it's an idea. I've got another song that I wrote which is called Husband in Law and and it's been thrown up to me and why don't I write something like that? Now I don't know, it hadn't it hadn't uh, entered my head yet and I haven't gotten a good idea about it yet, so I don't know if it'll ever come about. Were you the guy who wrote the song about the uh, woman who you know, my wife just ran off with a black guy? No, that was David Allen Coe. Oh that was David Allen Coe. No, that's right. not no I don't get it straight. All right, sorry. No, no <laughs> I apologize. I think that song. And what will nigger law be? In other words, uh, your uh, this because is it's 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 oh, oh I, I see. Just the title right now. All right, okay. <laughs> is it true there's a tribute album in the works that Celine Dion and Barbara Streisand are going to do the works of Johnny Revel? All the big stars. Kevin Spacey. Are Kevin Spacey is <laughs> singing uh, the house <laughs> next door to me has just been sold to niggers. Guys, here's nigger nigger. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want me to sing it. You want me to sing it. Rob, uh, you're on the air with Johnny Rebel. Go ahead. Hey, Howard. Yeah. How you doing, man? I've been listening for, God, since I don't know how long. This guy sounds just like the, uh, the leader of the Klan guy. What the hell is his name? Daniel Carver? Yeah, he sounds just like him. Do you know Daniel, Daniel Carver, Carver, Johnny? No, I don't. Yeah. Well, he knows you. He knows you. He sells your records. Well, no, I don't he know him. I don't even know where he's from. Where is he from? Georgia. 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 No, I don't know him. Up in the woods of Georgia, and he's with the Klan. He's one of the top guys over there, and I know he loves your songs and puts them in the catalog and sells them actually. <laughs> yeah. So you don't see any residuals from that, huh? No, I don't. You better contact. The only thing I get paid from is is, is the, is the uh, uh, records that are coming off of the official Johnny Rebel site. The rest of the stuff is bootleg stuff. Joe, you're on the air with Johnny Rebel. Yo. Yes. I got it. Johnny, I got a buddy that idolizes you, man. Who is that? Well, I got a friend, John, that idolizes you. Really? Hey, Howard, that can be in play number 11. Huh? What's that? Coontown. <laughs> Do we have Coontown, uh, Coontown. Fred? <laughs> Did you write that, Johnny? Oh, yeah, I wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, of course I wrote that. Of course I wrote that. Oh, that's that one, one of mine. Uh, Coon number 11. Town, number Coon Town. Coon Town coming at you. We don't have Coon Town. We don't have that. Uh, come with you, bud. <laughs> hey, Johnny, would you bang Mariah Carey if you had the chance? Would I do what? Are you a married man? Yes, I am. Oh, so you won't bang Mariah Carey? I wouldn't bang her if I was single. Really? No. Ever bang a black chick? No, I wouldn't. Not not even if I've it was... I never, a... and I never would. What if it was like uh, Beyonce from Destiny's Child? <laughs> <Me won't. laughs> no. Really? I, say, how would I prefer sticking to my kind? That's say a white woman out there. Was... I mean, there's some nice looking white chicks out there, too, you know? Right. What about the high step in yellow? Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> what about a high step in yellow? <laughs> what is a high step in yellow? What is a high step in yellow? Step in yellow? Step in yellow either. When you sing in your song um, uh, that, uh, that banjo lips is a high step in yellow, yeah. what does that mean? <laughs> I never heard that expression before. Well, Kind of a call, well, I call a high step in yellow. What we call a high step in yellow down here is someone who's, who's a, uh, mixed breed, you know? Half white, half, uh, oh. half, oh. uh, black. Half, uh, you know, it's really something. I don't know what you, what you call a cross between a black and a, and, and a white. I have no idea. It's one thing I got against. Octoroon. In the races. That's an octoroon. You don't know what to call them. That's confusing. Mulatto. Mulatto. Octoroon. Yeah. You know, it's Yeah, but I don't ever see, I've never seen this, and I know, I've never seen this on anyone's, uh, resume. That they put down Malata, you know? You know, Johnny, uh, one of the things I always find interesting, I <laughs> recently I recently had uh, I recently had uh, Paul McCartney in the studio. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, a fellow I think you've heard of. 
Yeah. And uh, I was asking him about his songwriting and how he got the inspiration for a lot of these songs. And it's interesting to speak with you and get and the hear your and hear your inspiration. You know, like when you wrote my, uh, you know, the the. Uh, you know the, the 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 banjo lips or the house next door to me has been salty nigger. Have you experienced that in life? Did that just happen to you? Where the house well, next door? Well, just I want to tell you something. How uh, when I was writing that song, I just laughed and I laughed, <laughs> and my wife wanted to know what I was laughing at, and I and I tell her what I was writing down there, and I said I don't know what's coming out here. I said, but it's the funniest thing I've ever you know I've ever done, and I thought it was funny. A lot of the artists, you know, it's a humorous song. No, it's nothing I've experienced. I, I've never been. Fishing with a black guy or anything. You know, that kind of stuff. Of, no banjo lip. I don't even know why I got the name banjo lip. It was just something that drew come up in my head, you know. A lot of the artists uh, talk about that uh, when they write these songs, somehow they come from God. That, well, in other words, say. you don't you don't really know where they come from. It seems like a higher power just puts them in your head. Do you get that feeling? I get that feeling. I, you know, I don't know if it's God or what, but I mean, when I start writing a song, if I really get down and get serious about it. And uh, it's, it starts coming there. Well, uh, I don't know where it's coming from. Like I said, some of these tunes, when I wrote them, I, could, I couldn't have told you where it was coming from. And I, and I can't believe sometimes that I sat down and wrote these things. Do the words and the music come together or what? Oh, um, yeah. Bert, it, you're on once the air. I get the tune in my head, yeah. well, the words come very easy. Yeah, Bert, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, listen. Uh, I'm from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And listen, man, I feel for Johnny Rebel. You know why? Because when you break it down... There's a difference between niggers and blacks. See, niggers are the ones that don't do s***. I mean, crap. Oh. They don't do anything, right? They sit around just like white trash. you got to hear me out. They're just like white trash. All right. Okay. I I've had enough of that. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, does it, uh, does it have to... I don't to... think Johnny makes a distinction in his song. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Marcy, go ahead. You're on the air with Johnny Rebel. Hello? Yes, go ahead. You're on with Johnny Rebel. All right. I just want to see this guy's retarded. I cannot believe the fact that he's saying that he wrote these songs. And how can you sit there and say these things that comes from the heart? He didn't write these songs and he's saying he's not racist. That's f***ing bullshit. But why does everyone on, on the air cursing? I'm why? Dumb, why would the F word every minute? I have to bleep you every second. Your words are meaningless on the air if you use the F word, ma'am. These people curse. Johnny laughing. <laughs> this is even. This is more funny than yeah, the song. I don't mind the cuss words. <laughs> Leonard, go ahead. You're on the. Yes. Air. Good morning, Howard. We'd like to thank you for uh, bringing Johnny to our attention because we love him up here in the Bronx. This guy, we never heard of him. Then you started playing his stuff, and we got he's got a big following in the Bronx. That wasn't my intent, sir. Well, let me just tell you another thing too. An interesting thing when we were researching trying to get his music. His great grandfather used to own Robin's great grandfather. Wow! So well, there you go. What a fascinating yeah, fact. Jim Daddy is on the air with Johnny Rebel. Go ahead. Jim Daddy had head dragon and Cougar Clan. Oh, okay. Mr. Rebel, would you write a wedding song for my son who's getting married next week? <laughs> a wedding song. <laughs> sure, I'll write your wedding song. All right, so the real Johnny. A lot of people. When was the last time Johnny wrote a song that had the word nigger in it? Yeah, that's a good question. And this morning. <laughs> Johnny, when's the last time you wrote a song that had the N-word in it? Oh, uh, probably about three or four months ago before oh. I, I started having my... I work, like I said, we're writing, uh, I'm writing tunes now for a new album, for a new uh, CD that'll be out next spring or so, you know? As an artist, aren't you sort of caught in a bind? I mean, people know you for your N-word songs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you don't put it in there... Are it's, they really going to buy your music? Are they going to buy your music without the N word? I think I could write a. Uh, I, I think I could write a, a, a song like this with uh, and not use that word, and I believe I could get it out there. You do. I don't know. I think so. I, are you disturbed that a lot of guys claim to be Johnny Rebel? Oh, a lot of guys do. Yes, sir. But, but does it bother you? No. Well, it bothers me for the fact that they're out there stealing stuff that you know that should you know if if they wouldn't be bootlegging the records and stealing them. Well, a, a bootlegger is a thief. Right. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And well, uh, uh, when they're doing this, they're actually taking money out of my pocket. So uh, that's why I haven't made a whole lot of money on this thing. These things are some of the most bootleg things on, on the web, I believe. Uh, Johnny, wh wh where are you living these days? Uh, well, I live in South Louisiana. I'm right. a Cajun. And, and uh, I understand you raise worms for a living? No, I used to. I got out of that. That's a lot of work. I see. And what are you doing I've got now? A little too much work. And what are you doing now? Now? 
Well, I've got the, uh, I've got a business. My wife's got a business, and then we've got a joint business. We've got three businesses we run. I don't say what they are. Because, because people might uh, not go there because you... Uh... Well, I've got... You know, my business uh, pertains to... Uh, I work a lot with with uh, youngsters, you know. Oh, <laughs> are you a guidance counselor? No, no, I'm not a guidance counselor, but I do... I do work with with youngsters. You I've been working all my life, you know. You, you're telling me you work with kids? Uh, yeah. And, and what most these kids don't. And, well, I'd say 99.9% of them don't know a, word, a thing about me. Today's lesson, boys, <laughs> nigger smell. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go to your workbook. Oh, yeah, we'll go to work. We have to go to workbook. Well, I'm going to bring out my guitar and show you what it's like to play a musical instrument. Right. You go now. <laughs> Do you play pin the tail on the nigger with the kids or what? <laughs> Are these kids of all races or? Do you work I with any? Oh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> nigger hang man. Yeah. <laughs> we can hang the nigger. I'm gonna write a word on the board. Yeah. And this here nigger, if you get the word wrong, he gets hanged. <laughs> It's lunch time, not lunch time. Wait a second, it's Sesame Nigger Street on the TV. <laughs> Sir, I mean, that's unbelievable. If they ever found out you were Johnny Rebel, you'd be in trouble, right? Well, not with not with the white kids. The black kids might be a little upset. Hey? Right. How you doing, kids? This is me, Johnny Rebel. <laughs> Today we have something called a nigger piñata. That's right. Instead of a Hispanic piñata, this here is a black gentleman, and you'll take sticks and beat him till candy comes out of his eyes. He's really loud. I've stuffed bubble gum now. I'm not a songwriting course. Now, today, kids, we're going to have a spelling bee. Now, here's your first word. Nigger. Coincidentally, that's the last word, too. Sound it out. Nigger. Two syllables, nigger. Today, we're going to concentrate on the word spook. And high step and yellow. High step and yellow. How many? Names can you think of for years? Start it. Now I want you to spell Octoroon. Oh, Burrhead. All right, now let's play Hangman. First letter M, last letter R. This is called Lynch Man. <laughs> now it's time for math, kids. If you have three niggers and you lynch one, how many niggers are left? <laughs> So Johnny, um, so so it, do people think it's funny that you work with children? I mean, people who know you're really Johnny Rebel. Well, because we find you know, the people person. that know that is, is the older people. You know, people are close to my age. And I, I had one. My grandson was asked on the bus. He's in the band here in the local school, and uh, right. uh, one of the kids leaned over to him and said, "Hey, is your grandfather Johnny Rebel?" And my grandson said, "I don't know." <laughs> yeah. no, he, he didn't know. He didn't want to be put in that position, you know. He said, "My daddy collects all his records." He said, "That your your uh, your grandfather is uh, is Johnny Rebel." You you're know? a bit so of a legend, are a few I guess. People around here that know that, you know. Yeah, down in the south, I mean, I would imagine you're a legendary. But is he uh, responsible for giving out grades to these kids? Uh, what grades? Do you give report cards and stuff? Well, I don't give report report cards, but I do give them tests. Look here, now we're gonna do some nigger chemistry. <laughs> Now, how many pounds of cocaine can you make if you cut it with baby laxative? Let's see how many words you can rhyme with nigger. <laughs> All right, let's start with you, Artie. Uh, nigger? There you go. You, you passed. That's an A today, Artie. <laughs> well, that's an A plus. Now it's time for arts and crafts. Get out your black face. <laughs> we got a minstrel show at noon. <laughs> don't well, go, don't well, confuse it. Yeah, what's that, what's up, John? Listen, all this stuff, but listen, I really don't feel that bad towards black. You know, <laughs> yeah, not I don't bad. wish black has to look. Really? I don't, I, we, and I don't run around trying to make enemies with blacks. You know, if, if a black will treat me right, I'll treat him right, and 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 and, and, and no problems. You know, I well, let's leave it at that. I know, right? Leave it at that. Right. Johnny, reflects a different view, you know. But Johnny, I, I, I'll have to believe you when you tell me you're not a racist. But uh, well, that's it, a hard one. Yeah. It's a hard one to swallow, even for a big dope like me. Turn to page thirty and you yeah, know. your workbook. <laughs> Johnny's the modern racist. 
Um, I'd have you up here to do a concert for us, but it might be taken the wrong way. <laughs> but um, all right, good luck with you, Johnny. Okay. All right. Have to go up there anytime you want to. All right. Thank you so much, Johnny. Thank you for calling. I have to have to figure Johnny is going to have an epiphany one day and realize those songs are racist. <laughs> Just before he dies. Man. Turns out I've been racist all these years. <laughs> Hot damn. Look here, kids. Nigger geography time. <laughs> New York. You know it lives there, right? <laughs> now you ever go there? Don't you go above 110th Street? <laughs> God damn, that guy's funny. We're going to do some nigonometry. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to go on the World Wide Web. No wonder he didn't show up here. He would have had to show up here in disguise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to Yahoo, type in the word nigger, please. Uh, now, little Jimmy was working on a noose. So let's see that, son. Hmm. You ain't going to hang a nigger yeah, with this, son. What's this? Here's how to tie a noose. <laughs> Hearts and crafts there, you're going to learn how to tie a noose. <laughs> learn how to tie a noose, make a cross, sew some sheets together. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. That's Johnny Rebel, the real Johnny Rebel, Rob. But I don't have a problem with niggers. No. <laughs> <laughs> they stick to their own, I'll be fine. <laughs> Hell no. Why, I wrote those songs 30 years ago. And uh, apparently two months ago. So. <laughs> yeah. hey, you know what, maybe we should take a commercial break. Yeah, get John, that all over. John, you like niggers too, right? <laughs> Yeah. I ain't a racist. That, that ain't no racist. Somebody dog. asked me to write these songs, so I did. I'll sue your ass. You tell me I'm a racist. We'll be back right after these words. <laughs> 